Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Play artist, right on dynamite. <laughs> Playing artist, right on dynamite. It's a- MP3 music search, only on Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury vehicles. Sync, say the word. Sean, Box.net is a cool service that has been getting incrementally cooler for reasons that I think are beyond you guys' control. Because it used to be, wow, thank you, it's the amount of storage I would get in a thumb drive for $15, only instead of having control of it, it's off somewhere I have to figure it out. But really, things have changed to really make Box.net a lot more important than it was when it was first founded. Isn't that right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we've had um, a lot of good response to our iPhone app and a lot of what we're doing on the mobile side just because... Um, you know, we have so much apps, so many apps that where you can create content that people don't want to be tied down to having it. You know, always syncing, you know, sync their phone to their computer, get the content out there, and do all kinds of stuff with it. I mean, with the kind of integrations that we can do with iPhone apps and third-party apps like Quick Office, you can create all your content on your iPhone, make it instantly shareable through a, a platform like Box. And I've, what, what, how are you making yourselves different though? Because now cloud storage has become a little bit more, uh, a little, little bit more out there in terms of more people, more people getting into the Scrum. Like, what does Box.net do that things like Dropbox doesn't do? Things like Amazon Storage doesn't do. Sure. So the emphasis isn't so much about the storage; it's more about the sharing and the collaboration aspect of it. So it's not so much that we put your content online; it's what you can do with it because of it's online. So you know the fact that you know when you have your content on Box, you can easily share it with people. Use Box as a collaborative workspace, and just kind of have everything that you would always need you know, around your content, um, all your discussions, tasks that, that you have, your favorite services, all in one place. You actually you actually have like web apps that are built into the service for actually live editing all your stuff, right? Exactly. We have about 25 to 30 services right now, so you can like edit docs with Zoho, um, edit photos with Picnic. Um, send it out to Twitter, send it to FedEx, e-fax it out, all this kind of stuff. And you can access all your content on Box through other services like salesforce.com. So it goes both ways. What, what I love about it is your iPhone app that lets you really add storage onto your iPhone and also make it, make it as though... I hate, to, I hate to use the buzzword cloud, but like you do have, your iPhone is just merely something you can project your files into. Now, what's, what's the future for the iPhone for you guys? Well, I mean, we're definitely trying to look at the possibilities of what we can do around the iPad. So all the extra screen real estate were the different, you know, unique uh, use cases that you can have because it's a really big touch device. And just, you know, really providing like a rich experience around applications that just tap into the cloud. Because, I mean, you know, what's cool about Box is the fact that you could have you know, a couple terabytes of data on, you know, in the cloud, and it doesn't really matter. You know, it doesn't really matter how much space you have on your iPad, your iPhone, your BlackBerry. You can just tap into all your content um, directly through Box. Are we moving towards a place where Box.net becomes more of a, a little closer to an invisible service that yeah. people don't know where their files are coming from? They just know that they're available everywhere. I think so. I mean, Box is certainly in itself a really cool platform for collaboration, but we really want to be uh, kind of like the content foundation for other w- services that people turn to, whether it's like a Salesforce.com or other you know, web-based business applications or even consumer applications. I just want to you know, give people really cool stuff to do with their content because it's on the cloud. Now, before we let you go, though, you did mention iPad. I didn't bring it up. We didn't, I didn't have to sign anything about something I wasn't going to discuss. Can you tell us anything about what you really want to do physically with uh, Box.net and the iPad, like the role it's gonna, you want it per, to perform, not only for the user, but for the whole app space behind the iPad? Sure. I mean, well, you know, because we, we really use Box as kind of like a team workspace, we're trying to figure out how, you know, for example, a group of iPad users could use Box within a meeting. So using all kinds of different cool technologies, whether you know, none of this is a surprise, but you know, if you could like bump a file with somebody with your iPad from Box and all that kind of stuff, and share it with everybody that's in the room, and because it's it's always a connected device, I mean, that's where we really see like the unique uh, use case scenarios. Do you feel like you have enough information about the iPad and how it's going to deal with networks and storage to really start uh, really pushing on this, or do you think you're going to have to wait to have iPads in your hands and see what they do when you poke at them? Well, it's funny. We have a bunch of blank sheets of paper where they're just um, iPad outlines, and we're just drawing a bunch of stuff. So right now we have like. 60, you know, piece of paper floating around between us and uh, our development team and just kind of everybody getting in on what we want an iPad app to look like. Um, But our our developers have dug into the SDK and they see some really unique uh, scenarios, especially because they're giving a little bit more access to the files that are that are on the iPad as opposed to what's on your iPhone. So being able to share, you know, content between something on, you know, an iLife app like Keynote and then, you know, doing some cool stuff with it through boxes is a pretty cool thing for us. 
I think that, you know, the, the, the best photo gallery to come out of this show, I think, would be a photo gallery of everybody who wants to develop for the iPad. What have they built with their own two hands to mock up the thing they don't have yet? So Yeah, exactly. I mean, no, yeah, we have the, you know, we have the, uh, the colored iPad that we just cut out and put in a kind of like 3D thing. And I tell you, like, the, one of the first product meetings we had around it, it was just a paper model. We were passing this around as if it was real, and we were just like, wow, this is so cool. And so the fact, you know, we're, we're just waiting to see, you know, when we can get our hands on it. Maybe, you know, maybe with some luck, Apple will give us some early test devices. Who knows? But uh, I, I think the only way they can do it is just wait for everyone to get in line and just like throw four into the audience and see who survives. <laughs> exactly. I hope we're one of them. So. Well, I'll, I'll be. I'll, you'll be fighting me. So we'll. <laughs> hopefully, we'll, we'll. We'll still have our manners intact. We can share. So. Uh, not so good at sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving us so much of your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, Andy.